Coming in at number 10, we have Jay-Z. Can you become the king of the rap game without selling your soul to the devil? Well, probably, but people still think that Jay-Z must have made some sort of deal with the devil in order to make it to the top. There's a lot of hints of satanic symbols in his music videos, and people think that he is in the Illuminati. And this could be real. Maybe him and Beyonce are in a league of evil rich people who want to make the world fall apart so they can control it. But in order to think that Jay-Z is in the Illuminati and sold his soul to the devil, you have to believe in the Illuminati, and you have to believe in the devil, and if you don't believe in either of those, Jay-Z is just a very successful guy. That's it. In our number 9 spot we have Katy Perry. Yikes. I hate putting her in this list, but I have to acknowledge something that she did say that does make people suspicious of her. It has long been rumored that celebrities sign contracts with the devil in order to establish themselves in Hollywood, and so it may not surprise you to hear of Katy Perry saying that she sold her soul to the devil. Yes, one could argue it is an expression, but that expression came from somewhere, and her words came from somewhere. Either she believes that she makes music that she doesn't really love because someone is telling her to, which sounds like low vibes to me, or she literally sold her soul to the devil himself. When asked about her first album, which was a gospel album, Katie is quoted as saying, yeah, I released a gospel record when I was 15 because I grew up in a household where all I ever did was sing the gospel music, and my parents are both traveling ministers. And so I kind of sang about what was going on in my life at 15. And that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear, I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, but it didn't work out, and so I sold myself to the devil. Coming up in our number 8 spot, we have Michael Scott. No, not Michael Scott from The Office. That great, beautiful angel would never sell his soul to the devil. This is Michael Scott from the year 1175. Yes, a very, very long time ago. Michael studied at Oxford and traveled around England until he planted his roots in Sicily and became the court astrologer to Frederick II. People always speculated that he might be in cahoots with Lucifer. As as he was quite vocal about how against the black arts he was. The people believed that to be a distraction from the fact that he actually participated in it. He also wrote a lot of text on necromancy and black magic under the guise of science. So that didn't help his cause. There was all kinds of rumors about him including one where he supposedly conned the devil into helping him make a railroad. He apparently had demon familiars that would fetch him the finest international delicacies and that he traveled by way of a demon sea creature. He was known to having many ritual sites and so the people have concluded that he obs was BFFs with the devil. In our number 7 spot we have Christoph Heinzmann. Christoph Heinzmann is a painter from the 17th century. Apparently in 1677, Christoph was found in such a state that it was believed that he had been tortured by a witch's curse. When questioned by the authorities, Heinzmann admitted that his state was his own fault as he had signed a pact with the devil nine years earlier as a way out of the cycle of poverty and depression that he was in. Apparently he had a few exorcisms done to him, and during one of the times, a dragon with a contract had appeared in front of him, and Heinzmann was able to rip up the contract. Apparently after that, his symptoms seemed to disappear for a while, but then eventually came back. Apparently in his diary entries, he revealed that the devil appeared to him frequently, and he was always trying to tempt him. We now know that if he were alive today, a more contemporary diagnosis would be that he had schizophrenia. But honestly, it's also very possible that he was just inhabited by demons to do the devil's work. In our number 6 spot, we have Oliver Cromwell. Well, known for being an English general, this is a name that is very known as he has been widely depicted as a person with devil's horns. Oliver was being marketed as someone who made a pact with the devil, and that is what explained his rise to power and success. Naturally. When he passed in 1658, there was a massive storm with such crazy winds that the people said that it was the devil coming to claim his soul. The winds were so strong that they were named Oliver's Wind. Eventually, his name became a part of a tale that people told children to get them to behave. Be good or the ghost of Cromwell will drag you to hell. In our number 5 spot today we have Roger Bolingbroke. In the 1400s, Roger Bolingbroke was accused of casting a horoscope that predicted the death 
of King Henry. Roger admitted to the public that he had been dealing with the devil and was being encouraged by the Duke of Gloucester's wife Eleanor, aka the 1400s version of a clout chaser. Apparently she urged Roger to perform black magic for her to help her social standing and help her rise to the top. Did I say clout chaser? I meant a historical queen. In any case, Roger confessed so we're pretty positive he made a deal with the devil. But it didn't save him as he was eventually hung for his crimes. In our number 4 spot we have Paulo Gil. Some very old journals in Brazil were discovered talking about a man named Paulo Gil who was a sorcerer who apparently sold his soul to the devil for his magical powers. The author of the diaries that went by the name Batista spoke about how Gil set his sights on a slave and the slave and the slave owner needed to have an exorcism following the interactions with him. He wrote that Gil and him were at a crossroads when seven shadowy figures accompanied them. Batista apparently fled and that made Gil very angry. He wrote about how Gil then cursed the town because Batista wouldn't do what he had asked and it caused a crazy storm to come to the town. The storm apparently only stopped when Batista prayed to Saint Anne and after he denied giving his blood to Gil. In our number 3 spot we have Katharina Kepler. This is a woman that is widely known for being a possible sorceress and also known for most likely making a deal with the devil. She is another historical person who is depicted as having devil horns. She is the mother of a very famous astrologer by the name of Joanne Kepler. Apparently her friend accused her of poisoning her, most likely just gave her some wine. And Katharina was put in front of the courts for questioning. On this occasion she was let off from lack of evidence. Later. She she was then accused 49 times of dealing with the devil. She also was said to have killed livestock and people by reciting incantations over them, but after many trials she actually was given her freedom, only for her to actually pass away 6 months later. In our number 2 spot we have Saint Basil and the Slave. Saint Basil was born in the year 329 AD. He was born into quite a Christian household. He apparently wrote a large body of work that is quite treasured today. However, However, it's quite possible that he came in contact with the devil at least on one account and had met someone who sold their soul to the devil. It was said that he was apparently approached by a woman whose husband sold her soul to the devil and was now his slave. Apparently this man had made a contract with the devil to marry the woman he loved. The devil followed through and he did marry her but then the man became a slave to the devil. Saint Basil prayed for this man and the contract was delivered by the wind and Saint Basil was able to tear it up and release the man. So the man got what he wanted, got to marry his love and got to be freed of the devil. In our number 1 spot we have Lady Gaga, another Hollywood insider who has ties with the devil. Allegedly, Lady Gaga has been quoted as saying, I deeply regret selling my soul to the dark forces of the Illuminati organization. Okay, so when I hear that, I think, this girl is just memeing us. But apparently in her documentary entitled Gaga 5 foot 2, Gaga speaks about how she was inducted into the Illuminati and how she sold her soul to the devil. She's quoted as saying, I had just been on stage. It was a good show. I was high on the love and applause from the crowd. I was outside lighting a cigarette. I was aching for more and more of everything. I just wanted to feel good, feel anything. Then this man, a strangely ageless man in a suit, spoke to me. He was leaning against the wall smoking and he said to me, I think you've got what it takes. Do you want it? I asked what it was. I thought he was coming on to me, but he smiled and said, everything, success, fame, riches, power. Do you want it all? I looked at him curiously. I couldn't work it out. Then he just stood there and sang one of the songs from my routine earlier. It was otherworldly. I stared at him like he was a dark jewel drenched up from the deepest ocean. I got down on my knees and asked him who I should praise. I looked him right in the eye and told him I wanted it all. I told him I'd do anything. And I bet you anything is what she did. Coming up in our number 10 spot we have Jack Parsons. Known for being an American engineer, Jack Parsons was alive from 1914 to 1952. He grew up reading sci-fi stories about rocket ships and people going out into space. Apparently when he was 13 years old, he planned to sell his soul to the devil in exchange for a real live rocket ship. 
Of course, it didn't work out, but he didn't let it discourage him, and as he grew older, he tried to create a rocket engine powerful enough to travel to outer space. Apparently in his 20s, he began to follow a cult leader, Aleister Crowley, and he attempted at doing a spell himself, called the Babylon Working. This spell was supposed to help him summon a goddess by the name of Babylon that would help men go to the moon someday. Jack ended up inventing jet fuel that is used by NASA even today, so arguably his spell worked. Or perhaps the devil helped him out and he actually sold his soul without knowing it. I guess we'll never know. Coming in at number 9, we have Johann George Faust. Now this one's a little bit of a weird one, because it's hard to tell if a dude from the 16th century sold his soul to the devil, because he actually put a pentagram on the ground, threw some goat's blood on it, and did a little dance and sung a little song, and then shook hands with the devil, or was it because he was just an astronomer, and back then people thought that meant you worked with the devil. But this dude apparently worked with the devil to get his fame. The devil offered him 16 years at the top of the world of science. When his time came, the devil arrived and he renegotiated. He was able to squeeze out another eight years out of the devil and at the end of the eight years he would pass and everyone would say the devil took his soul. Now this is the part of the story that makes it seem like there could have been something to do with the devil going on. When he died apparently there was an explosion of fire and all that was found was bits and pieces of his body. Now this could have been an experiment gone wrong that took place in Faust's home but I don't know what kind of explosives an astronomer would be messing around with. People think that this explosion could have been the devil popping in and ripping his soul right from his body. Maybe he shouldn't have made this deal. Who knows? Coming in number eight, we have Tom Hanks. No way. Not Tom Hanks. There's no way that one of the nicest dudes in the world could have sold his soul to the devil. Well, let's look at the evidence first. He has not only been very successful in Hollywood, but he has also won many Oscars. That is supposed to be a sign that you are part of the Illuminati. He has a really rude son, and that might be because God has cursed him for worshipping the devil. I mean, that is probably just what happens when a kid grows up rich, and his parents are too nice to put him in his place, but it also could be the work of God laying down his wrath. But even all of that doesn't mean he sold his soul to the devil so he could be rich through the Illuminati forever. But then people who love to dive deep into conspiracy theories say that Tom Hanks got coronavirus. So that means that he is a pawn in the Illuminati plan. He faked getting sick so that people would believe in the virus and they could continue to take over the world. Whoa! I love these sold your soul stories because they just get crazier and crazier. Coming at number 7 we have Urbane Grandier. It would seem that the devil's reach is far because he has even made a pact with a dude who was the Pope. Now, there isn't a whole lot of evidence that proves whether or not Urbane sold his soul before or after he was Pope, but there is a lot of evidence that this dude was up to some nefarious stuff. He would apparently host or and had a number of sexual partners. There's stories of him torturing people who he didn't agree with, and he was also practicing witchcraft. There was a group of nuns that was said to have disrespected him, the Pope of all people, and he sent a demon after them to ruin their life. Well, unlike now, back when this dude was Pope in 1634, if people thought you were up to something with the devil, you would be done for for sure. Enough people came forward and accused this guy of witchcraft that there was a trial. During the trial, there was a lot of evidence there was a contract that had backwards writing on it, said to be the work of the devil that had the devil's signature on it, or apparently it did. I'm not sure how they fact checked that one. But many people came forward to disclose this guy's unpope like acts, and eventually he was burned at the stake. My god. Coming in at number six, we have Pope Sylvester II. Two popes back to back. I think it's just salacious to say that a pope was in cahoots with the devil. That's why when you go through history, you can find a few popes that have been called out for loving the Dark Lord. Now, the the difference with Pope Sylvester is that it wasn't that he was excessively rich or because he was involved in sinful acts, it was actually because he was too smart. This guy invented the pendulum lock and the hydraulic organ, and he was in contact with Eastern religions and peoples to get ideas of what they were doing over there so he could incorporate their brilliance into his own society. And because of this, people said he might have got his all powerful mind from making a deal with the devil. I guess things never change because now when someone makes it to the top, everyone says they're in the Illuminati. Coming in at number five, we have Eminem. We all love the story 
of someone starting at the bottom and now they're here. We love when people are the underdog and work their way to the top. We love how people can defy the odds and become one of the most influential people in the world. Well, that's until they're actually at the top. Then we want to bring them down because it must have been the devil that got them all the way up there. That's the story with Eminem. There have been countless accusations that the rapper made a deal with the devil to jump to stardom and forever be held as one of the best rappers of all time. This is from some of the imagery that you will find in his music videos, whether it's a goat's head, a triangle, a single eye, or many of the other objects that are related to the devil. Well, the rumors about him don't stop there. They also say that the real Eminem is dead, that when he fell out of the public eye for a bit, he pushed back against the Illuminati and no longer wanted to do their bidding. So they killed him and replaced him with a clone that they can control. And that's where he got his perfect beard from. Coming in at number four, we have Jaden Smith. Can you pass down a deal with the devil to your kids? Like kind of grandfathering them into the product like an old phone contract? Is that possible? Can you do that? I don't know how the devil works. I'm not famous enough to get in contact with him. But apparently Jaden Smith has been gifted the allegiance to the devil through his dad. People base this off of Will Smith, his fame, and the fact that Jaden has some strange beliefs about the world. He's very interested in a thing called orgos. It's a strange culty belief that the world is governed by positive and negative forces that we can't see. That kind of sounds like midichlorians from Star Wars. But people think that he's using a demonic subsect to try and get people into the Church of Satan. Coming in at number three, we have Katy Perry. If you become a massive celebrity, there's only one answer, and that is the Illuminati. There's no other reason you could make it to the top. Well, for Katy Perry, that's what everyone thinks. There is a ton of stuff we could pull from, but her biggest one is the music video Dark Horse. Because if any celebrity does anything that even comes close to resembling a pyramid, you better believe that conspiracy theory people are going to come running for it. And of course, this music video has an Egyptian theme, meaning that she must have sold her soul to the devil. There was also the time she performed at the Grammys and they had her in a witch's theme with a massive crystal ball. This means that she was, of course, doing a satanic ritual in front of the whole world. I mean, what else could it be? Coming in at number two, we have Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell was a fading politician and commander in the 17th century. Every champion must fall, and usually they don't get back up after their time has come. But with Cromwell, it was quite the opposite. He was able to have a second breath in his career. He was able to stand in the limelight once more. He was able to have all the people clamor at his feet and become the top dog once again. This second run at life saw him become a prominent political figure and a very skilled tactician. While this was probably hard work and intelligent moves, most people wrote this off as the man selling his soul to the devil. Now the backing to this theory comes from the legend about him when he dies. There was apparently a storm that came over the city and was raging the entire night. People say this was the devil coming down to claim his soul. Now that might have been true, but I don't know if the devil would go to that much work to get one soul. This guy's getting thousands of souls every day, hundreds of thousands every day. If he had to put on a massive light show to get each one of them, he would never be able to wrangle them all up. He just wouldn't have enough time. And coming into the number one spot, we have Christian Bale, probably the best Batman ever, and one of the kings of the meme world with the amount of juice people have been able to pull out of his hit American Psycho. I've never seen American Psycho, but I want to just so I can have a better understanding of what scenes these memes come from. But when did the Dark Knight himself decide to give his soul to the devil and become one of the Dark Lord's little minions? Well, we don't know the exact time of when this might have happened, but Christian Bale has actually publicly thanked Satan. After winning a Golden Globe for his work in the movie Vice, where he played Dick Cheney, remember the vice president who shot his friend by mistake, and might have had a hand in the whole Guantanamo Bay thing? Well, during his accepted speech, Christian Bale went down the regular road of saying thank you to all the people close to him, and then he capped it off by saying thank you to Satan for inspiration. Now, this might have just been the actor taking a stab at how ruthless Dick Cheney is, saying that the man is actually the devil, or maybe he was actually thanking the devil for giving him the juice he needs to do what he needed to do to play the role. Like the devil materialized in his room and helped him go over lines. If that is the case, the devil doesn't seem like that bad of a dude. In our number 10 spot, we have Angelina Jolie. Okay, I know what you're thinking, what? The beautiful looking angel that is Angelina Jolie sold her soul to Mr. Satan himself? Probably. Apparently in 2016, a secret tape of Angelina surfaced on YouTube. And on this tape, it was a young 23 year old Angelina in 1999, where she is being secretly recorded in a private convo with some of her friends. Allegedly, Jolie is found telling her friends about some kind of celebrity initiation that is often misunderstood as a form of sadism and masochism combined. Then apparently, 
Angelina talks about her experience and how during the ritual, the initiated people are tied up and tortured, and well, just Google it because it's not very PG, but supremely sadistic and masochistic if you ask me. She then goes on to talk about how she got a tattoo after the ritual and how she had to kill a snake as a sacrifice. So yeah, sounds like she quite frankly made a deal with the devil. In our number nine spot, we have Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson was a very known guitarist of his time. Robert was alive from 1911 to 1938. Not a very long life, and it's probably because the devil said to him, come home, my child. Or so I imagine. Word on the street is that he apparently grew up quite poor and wanted a prosperous life. And so he went to the crossroads of a major highway and made a deal with the devil himself. He wrote a song called Me and the Devil Blues, where he talks about walking alongside with the devil. So honestly, that's all the proof I need. He died at only 27 years old, and his music became quite popular after his passing. He apparently was forgiven for his sins after he passed, and was then allowed to be buried in the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Mississippi. In our number eight spot, we have Bob Dylan. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Bob Dylan, Melissa, the musical icon. Do you really think he sold his soul to the devil? Look, I'm just here to present the evidence. You can decide, you can speculate. There is some evidence that points to this being a possibility and even I'm quite shook. You may or may not know of the song he wrote called Crossroads, where he tells the story of him being at a crossroads with his soul. In the song, he talks about falling to his knees and pleading to the Lord to save his soul. But then he also says, and I'm standing at the crossroads, believe I'm sinking down. Ha, huh. ha, huh. sinking down into the fiery pits of hell, perhaps? <laughs> Some speculate that this crossroads that he is referring to is the same crossroads where Robert Johnson supposedly offered his soul to the devil. Apparently in an interview once while talking about the song, Bob is quoted as saying, I made a bargain with it a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. Whatever it is, we never found out, but since he sunk down, I'm going to say that it was probably with Lucifer himself. In our number seven spot, we have Niccolo Paganini. I really tried with the accent. Born in Italy in 1782, Niccolo was known for being a professional violinist. By the age of 12, he was already touring and doing shows. And by 15, he went on a world tour. Apparently his mom was such a hardcore stage mom that people of the time believed that she summoned Satan to make sure her son sold out concerts. <laughs> Love this. Even in the 1700s, momagers existed. People also believed that he himself was walking with the devil. Probably a bad rumor because he was so talented and jealousy probably took over his competitors of the time. But maybe there was some basis for this as he was said to have abnormally long fingers that moved so quickly and his skin was very rubbery like. There are medical explanations for this today, but perhaps people of the time thought that they were witnessing a magical being of some sort, and that's why they attributed it to the devil. Apparently on his deathbed, he freaked out when a Catholic priest came to pray for him, and he said that he would be saved and for the priest to leave. Spoiler alert, he was not saved, but this last act was all people needed to hear to confirm their speculations. In our number six spot, we have Jimmy Page. Yep, another one that I find surprising, but honestly, I'm more of a pop hip hop listener, so it's not surprising that I'm a little ignorant to the goings on within a hardcore rock band, so yeah. Jimmy Page was the guitarist for the band Led Zeppelin. Apparently, he was very interested in occult teachings and specifically by the famous occultist, Aleister Crowley. He was such a huge fan that he ended up buying Aleister's home in Scotland. He would relay stories about scary sounds he would hear in the house and of how people had died there. This of course led people to think that he was probably involved in some kind of dark magic like a lot of musicians and quite possibly sold his soul to the devil. Because of his reputation, people began to believe the other band members were Satanists as well. 
Apparently, people believe that if you play Stairway to Heaven backward, you hear demon-like voices. Holy crap, that's terrifying. Can someone do it and maybe report back to me? Okay, thanks. In our number five spot, we have Antoine Rose, the iconic witch that led to the world understanding that where there is a witch, there is a magical broomstick. Antoine's story is a tragic one. In today's society, she would be known as a poor single mother that turned to illicit substances. But in the year 1477, the world was much different. Apparently, Antoine was convinced that another witch tried to kidnap her son, but her and her son stabbed the witch in the arm to stop her. Witnesses of the time swore that she spoke to the devil, asking him for help, most likely in a trance-like state from an illicit substance, but again, this was a different time. These witnesses watched her slather on an ointment on a broomstick and placed it in between her legs. Apparently, the ointment was a psychedelic herb that can only be absorbed through the skin, so it makes sense as to why she maybe did it this way. Anyways, long story short, she was accused of being a witch and she eventually confessed to working with the devil. But when you think about it, she probably did think that she had been working with the devil because perhaps she had a weird trip where she believed she spoke to a spirit and if she didn't have anyone to say, hey gal, that's totally normal when you have a crazy trip, like the thousands of people online seem to say, then she perhaps did think she was crazy and that she had talked to the devil. In our number four spot, we have Giles Duray. You may recognize this famous French name as he was a knight that fought alongside Joan of Arc. He was very close friends with Joan and took it very hard when she was kidnapped and burned at the stake. Apparently after her death, he turned to alchemy and became fascinated with the idea of eternal life. Over the years, he had grown to be one of the richest people in France, and it was said that the Catholic Church was wanting money from him. Ignoring this request, he actually decided to put on a play, but this wasn't just any play, it was a major production with paid actors and set builders alike. It has been said that the church was furious about this, and so they marketed him to the public as a serial killer and convinced them that he worshiped Satan because he practiced alchemy. He was sentenced to death and afterwards, all of his assets were seized by none other than the Catholic Church. Wow. Look, there's good and bad people in every place of the world and there's good and bad people that practice every religion. But it just hurts my soul when I hear stories like this because I'm sure there are tons of good Catholics of the world and this kind of story paints them all as bad. So why do the bad guys always ruin it for everyone else? In our number three spot today, we have Giuseppe Tartini. Excuse me as I butcher these Italian names. <laughs> Give me a pass, I'm British. Just love me. Giuseppe Tartini is known for being a famous Italian composer and violinist. He was more specifically known for being able to play a song that is so complicated, many people today can't even play it. The song is called The Devil's Trill Sonata, and it is a song that he composed after he was apparently woken up by the devil himself. The devil was sitting on the edge of his bed and playing his violin. Apparently after that night, he could magically play trills that are almost impossible for people to play. So naturally, everyone assumed that he made a deal with the devil. I believe it. In our number two spot, we have the Salem Witches. Okay, so if you don't know about the Salem Witch Trials, you should definitely do some Googling tonight after this because this is some juicy history. In the late 1600s, there were many women who were said to be friendly with the devil in Salem, Massachusetts. The people of the town drank some kind of marketing Kool-Aid and were convinced that certain citizens had powers and did rituals in the woods. A total of 25 people lost their lives during these trials, and of course, these accusations were never proven, and many years later, it was discovered that it really was a lie that spread like wildfire. A super sad story and a pretty crazy part of American history. In our number one spot, we have Aleister Crowley himself, known for referring to himself as the beast or the antichrist. Aleister Crowley is a very famous occult leader and magician. He is also known for having occult gatherings where people were encouraged to explore each other naked while they would do rituals. He was kicked out of Italy in 1923 for word of these gatherings had gotten around. 
He was once quoted as saying that God and Satan fought over his soul. And I guess we can assume that Satan won because he would highly encourage people to focus on selfish acts, which were considered satanic at the time, or perhaps still is depending on who you ask and what religion you were brought up with. <laughs> Crowley was known for saying, do what thou wilt, <laughs> which basically means do whatever you want in life. That is exactly what is promoted in society today, so perhaps maybe he was just a forward thinker of the time. But his own mother would call him Satan, so I'm gonna bet that he probs did sell his soul to the devil. Mm -hmm.